Today my food adventure brings me to Durham, home of the world-class cathedral city and of course outstanding natural beauty. From city to vale, dales to coast, you'll find fantastic food in amazing places such as Seaham Hall, which makes the most of its coastal location with an incredible sea grill restaurant. Or Auckland Castle, where you'll find masterpieces on plates as well as hanging on the walls. And Durham Cathedral, for amazing places to eat, you can't get much better than this. First up is a taste of Durham's great outdoors. Farm shops are a great place to get a real taste of the area. From Broomhouse Farm, an organic livestock farm whose shop specialises in traditional cuts of their pure Aberdeen Angus beef. To Nitsley, multi award winning farm shop, deli, cafe and butchers. And I've come here to find out what all the local fuss is about and meet the owner, Rachel Juicy. You must be Rachel. I am. I'm Greg. This nice place is Greg. beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. beautiful. How did it come about? Um, it's a business my husband and I started nearly seven years ago uh, from a range of redundant farm buildings. We set up the farm shop and cafe to sell our farm reared meats and locally sourced products. You're actually rearing some of the animals here yourself? We do, yes. Yeah, The shop takes all that the farm can provide, uh, so we raise uh, beef and uh, lamb on the farm. We have an on-site bakery. Um, do you? Yeah, Are so you baking this we, stuff? Yeah, we bake all our bread upstairs, oh. so uh, it's fresh down to the shop and the cafe every morning. Some lovely cheeses, uh, a good selection of local cheeses and also sort of a wider variety of continental cheeses, just to suit everybody's palate. We have uh, four butchers working Come on Come back, them. I want to look at the leg of lamb. <laughs> Look at that! We're hanging, hanging all our beef as well. Um, for four weeks we hang it on site, so it's all broken down from the carcass, which is often done in front of the customer. You've obviously put these up here for a reason. They have, they're for you to taste, Greg, yes. We've got uh, our award-winning tapas sausage, we've got uh, black bacon, and we've got our very, very popular farmhouse pork sausage, which we serve for breakfast every day in the cafe. Um, sausage sandwiches, things like that. This is your standard pork sausage? Standard pork sausage. Yes. Obviously I can taste these, can you I? You can help yourself. That is a beautifully light, slightly spiced, slightly sweet, extremely tasty sausage. Mm, it's a good one. It's, it's about our best seller. I wish that everybody that eats sausages could have a real quality one so they could see the difference. Yeah. There's not a bit of gristle, there's not too much fat. That's very, very clever. But can I tell you something else that's clever as well? Durham has found a good way for you to eat your way around the whole county, and it's called Tasty Trails. Along one of the routes, you'll find this charming place, the Rose and Crown, set in the Durham Dales, a wonderful area for fishing and game. Look at it, lovely 18th century coaching inn. I'd love to stay here, but today I'm here to discuss their food. It's every bit as charming inside as it is outside. But let's meet the man in charge of the engine room, Chef Dave Hunter. Hey, how are we doing, Greg? I'm happy, I'm yeah, happy. Good. You're going to do one of your signature dishes for I me? I am. What we're going to have today, we've got some local Herdwick mutton from a butcher down the road. I'm going to serve that with a Cutherston cheese pan haggerty. We'll seal this off. It's going to take six minutes in the oven. I'm going to serve this with some shoulder that I've braised down and then flaked all the meat off and uh, sausage that me and the butcher develop between us. And then the, uh, the pan haggerty with the local cheese from Cudderston, it's a mile away. Um, that's gonna be served with it and some little glazed baby vegetables. What is it you like about this area? Great, it's, it's an excellent farming area. It's an excellent area for meat. It's beautiful rolling hills. You can see the sheep in all the fields, the cows. I can get anything I need here. It's all excellent quality. If you were going to talk to people and say why they should visit here, what would you say? Well, it, because it's beautiful, basically. That's the, that, that's the bottom line. I mean, you, you drove up through all these hills. There's nowhere better for me. I mean, we've been up to Scotland, down to Dawlish, and I still think he, he is the best. Tell me about this place, a beautiful looking place, the Rose and Crown. Um, yeah, well, I've worked for the family for 15 years in, a, in another hotel at the own, and an opportunity came up here, and I thought, I want to give it a go because it's a beautiful building. I could see the potential as soon as I walked in to really go for the, the, the classic food that I wanted to produce. This is spectacular. 
And not only that, this is food that I want to eat. Food that's accessible to everybody, basically. I think it's difficult. I mean, I'm the same. I eat out a lot in good, good restaurants. Um, but I'd still like my mum's shepherd's pie. Classic flavours yep. of lamb with a little hint of sharp mint. It's my sort of food, Chef. It tastes even better than it looks. Excellent. Mate, your quality. Thank you. That's a very, very classic old-fashioned dish. And I'm going somewhere else now, very much old-fashioned. At Beamish Museum, they're still making food from the turn of the century. The ingredients, though, are fresh. Where do I start with this place? It's living history. A museum and a costume drama all rolled into one. I love this place. It is a living, breathing, working museum, showing quite clearly how people used to live in days gone by. But of course, I'm here for the food. I want to see how they used to eat in days gone by. Wow, <laughs> what a place. What a bakery. Are you in charge? I am. I'm Joyce. I'm assistant head of food. So we look after the bakery here at Beamish Museum. And is this how a bakery would have looked? It certainly is. In 1913, this is what you would have got. Fabulous. How would it differ from the bakeries that we know today? Um, bread was a staple of their diet, so the, a lot of people would still be making bread at home, but if you lived in the town, you'd be coming here to buy your bread. The bread you buy here doesn't have any additives or improvers like you buy today. Would it taste a lot different to me? Hopefully. It does taste good. Um, you need to eat it on the day you buy it. Have we made progress or should we go back? Um, for taste, we probably need to go back. Our cakes are just made like they would have been 100 years ago. So again, no additives, so just the pure ingredients. So I can actually taste the breads and the cakes that you make here? Mm -hmm. You can. Brilliant! Are there other foods that I can taste while I'm here? Yes, we have a sweet shop where we make quite a lot of our own sweets. We do boiled sweets. Um, Black Bullets were a sweet that they had in this area that the miners would take down the mine with them. Um, very traditional. We also have a fish and chip shop where you can buy fish, chips, cooked in beef dripping. The cold fired ranges. I love that. You can see how things were made traditionally. And I think every trip should involve artisan, small, traditional food producers. And Durham has got loads. The county is home to many passionate and innovative local producers, like the Rise Bakehouse, who champion handmade bread and traditional methods. Durham Gin, a small batch craft distillery, producing homemade gin and vodka. And Sonnet 43, a microbrewery that combines traditional beer making craft with a contemporary twist. And in my opinion, this is the future of traditional beer making. Their craft beer supplies businesses all over the UK, but some of it doesn't travel very far. In fact, they supply beer to the pub next door and they fancy themselves poets. Mark, you're one of the owners of Sonnet 43? That's correct, yeah. But what's Sonnet 43, please? Well, we opened the brewery in a small village in Durham called Coxo and looked back through history of people of note and worth. And we got back to the 1800s and the poet called Elizabeth Barrett Browning, who was born and raised in Coxo Hall. Um, she wrote a famous love poem called Sonnet Number no. 43, How I Love Thee, Let Me Count the Ways. And so we decided to take her love for her husband in the poem and interpret it into our love for beer. What is it you do? I'm a great believer in local produce and local producers and I just wanted to limit the miles from field to pint glass. What seems like a modern idea is actually a traditional way of doing things, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very much so, yeah. You yeah. also now own pub, restaurants, food pubs? Hotels, pubs, restaurants, yeah, yeah, food pubs. How many? We have nine in total. What would you say the secret of a good food beer pub is? What is it? Buying local, buying fresh produce, um, with all of our menus in our different sites, we, we also match the beer to the local food produce. Um, so we're very conscious of the area that we live in and you know all the producers around us really. You've pulled a couple of beers here for me. Sure. What, what, what have you pulled? Well I think probably the first one for you to try would be the bourbon milk stout. So this is a, um, a stout beer, so it's a dark beer and in the brew of the beer we introduce um, chocolate nibs 
and also age it in bourbon cask so that carries the flavour through the beer so if you'd like to try that. Wow that is as smooth as you like. It's almost creamy and it finishes with sweet notes. Yeah. That's an incredible beer. <laughs> Let me have a taste of it. This is your American right? Yeah. Smooth, highly quaffable and but it finishes with bitter notes. Hoppy, herby, very good. Mate, I like this. Any job's going. Many of the places I've visited hold a Taste Durham Award, a scheme that recognises excellence in quality and service. There are more than 70 eateries across the county that have that accolade, which also champions local produce, something which is celebrated each October during Taste Durham Month which sees eateries showcase local produce in special dishes. A great time to come and check out the fodder for foodies. If you're looking for a warm welcome, traditional values, great food and traditional beer, Durham's the place for you and me. Cheers. <laughs>